I don't normally record videos on Friday, but we had such an important number come out this morning. I thought, heck, why not? And of course, I invited the one and only Taylor from Life Goal Investments to riff on this with me. Uh, Taylor, thank you for doing this on Friday. We got a monster jobs number this morning. It's one of the last two key economic numbers before the Fed meets on the 13th and 14th. What'd you see? What'd we get? Uh, let's talk about it. You, you know we're nerds on Fridays when we're excited about getting jobs numbers, right? <laughs> exactly. What does that say about our life? <laughs> exactly. No, no, you're so right, though. This was, a, this was a big number, right? So the expectation was around 190, 190,000 jobs added for the month of May, and it came in at 339,000. So a big kind of blowout beat, essentially doubling what the expectation is. And rea in reality, if you take the average over the last year, this is almost exactly in line with the average of number of jobs added per month. Um, there was some interesting kind of data when you kind of look a little further at the jobs number. So you had this massive add of jobs of 339,000, but you also had an uptick in unemployment, which is like, okay, how does that happen simultaneously? And we could talk about kind of what was uncovered there as well. But that was my uh, original take was, okay, big jobs add, and then weird unemployment number that comes along with that. Yeah, this is why I think it, it's really important to help the audience kind of walk through this because you're going to undoubtedly hear inexperienced, aka uneducated folks in economics focus on 339. And let's be clear, they also revised, revised last month from 253 to 295. So kind of a double beat, right? If that's where you stayed, you would be screaming, the economy's doing great. You know, Jerome Powell's going to rug pull us all of that stuff, right? So if, yep. if that's where you are and that's what people are saying, that's not, not how it works. The economy is far more complicated. There are underlying factors to look at. The first one you've already pointed at, the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate was 3.4. It was expected to be 3.5. It came in at 3.7. Okay, wait. So we got a monster job beat. We added jobs. We also, unemployment rate went up. Well, as you know, there's this thing called U3 and U6. Oh God, what are those? U3 essentially means you're looking for a job. U6 is you don't have a job, doesn't matter, you're uninterested, whatever. What we are undoubtedly seeing is the conversion of U6 to U3. Correct. And that is best captured by the participation rate. Now, again, if you stayed at the high level, uh, the participation rate did nothing. It was flat month on month. However, if you go one level deeper and look at the prime working age, it is now at a cycle high of 83.4. 25 to 54 years old. Correct. So again, let's pretend to be Jerome Powell and tick this off. Jerome Powell sees more jobs. I don't think he really cares. I, I, don't, th I don't believe the talk track that Jerome Powell wants you to lose your job. I think Jerome Powell knows you might need to lose your job, but that's not what he wants. Unemployment rate going up. Good. He's like, it's working. Participation rate up. Working. There's one more factor. I keep talking about inflation is goods, housing, and wages. Services being the hard, hard, hard one to beat. Expectations were for 0.3. Bang on the number, month on month. Expectations for the year were 4.4. Slight beat, 4.3. Good. So, Net, net, I think this jobs report, if you get out of the headlines, Jerome Powell's like, damn, pretty good numbers. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, what it looks like to me is the fact that wage wage wages are just coming down in general. And that's obviously a big thing that they're trying to hang their hat on as the Fed is we need wages to come down. How do you get that to happen? You get participation rate in prime age workers to go up, which they're successfully doing right now. So on the other hand, you look at it from the consumer standpoint and you go, how is the consumer doing? Well, I think you've seen a weakening in the consumer, right? Because you have now more people saying, hey, I need to get a job and therefore the participation rate picking up. And you're also seeing more people having paychecks that are not keeping pace with inflation. And so what comes along with that? That comes along with savings account rates coming down and they're almost at all-time lows. Very rarely do you see a personal savings rate beneath 5%. That's very rare in, in history, and we're right there right now. And then on the other hand, you have consumer debt 
credit card debt hitting all time highs and all time highs is, is something that's a very scary term. I don't necessarily find that so scary because it's a dollar figure, but what you have is the shape of the line. The slope of the line is very, very steep right now, meaning credit card debts are going up at breakneck pace. Yeah. So all of I, that, yeah. go ahead. No, no, I, I want to. I think we need to push back on one thing because again, one of the things I like to do on this channel is 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 educate. And I will admit to not looking at this ahead of time, so this may be something we look at off at, off and then we come back to. I want to talk about the personal savings rate because I think that is a a number that freaks people out, and it's the wrong reasons. I think what's happening right now with savings is just like 1981 and 82, we're seeing. Well capitalized individuals take cash and convert it to something else that's not included in the personal savings rate. That is really what's happening. I believe money market accounts aren't considered cash and thus aren't in the personal savings rate. If that's true, we've seen what is it, a trillion dollars or some god awful number in money market accounts? Undoubtedly, we have seen people move to Bitcoin and crypto, not in. This, you've seen people move to gold, not in. So again, I think there's a lot of doomers that point at that number. They're scaring people. And really what you have is, no, I'm getting a better, I'm, my capital is working for me. So I want to push back on that. Do you know, basically, do you know money market accounts are included? I have been down this rabbit hole. And to be honest with you, it is very, very scary about how opaque it is. At the end of the day, when you start reading government documents, that are supposed to clarify this, it comes down to things that negate from your net income hmm. are not personal savings. Things that add to your net income continue to lie on the side of personal savings. So technically with that definition, which is directly out of the government document, something like Bitcoin would still be considered an asset at the end of the day hmm. and would be an attribute to your personal savings. Now, all that said, how the hell, heck, whatever, would they be able to track that, right? So yeah. it's it's a very kind of, again, opaque uh, definition and, and how they can track that, I'm not entirely clear, but by the way they define it, money markets are encountered in personal okay. savings on and on. So I do read that to the best of the government's ability as people not being able to put as much money away in positive places, whether it's savings account, money market, whatever it is, investments um, as they have in the past. Correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. So again, this is, this is really intriguing. Again, when you look at these numbers and you've obviously gone deep as I have in these numbers, do you think this is uh, does do these numbers today, and obviously we get another important number, I think probably the most important number on the 13th, the numbers that you saw today, once you dug in, did that make you feel more or less likely we're going to get a Fed rate increase or a pause? I don't think that a Fed rate increase is coming. Today's number showed relative success in the direction they're trying to take things. And what it also showed is that relatively the consumer is weakening. And I think mm -hmm. that there's almost no doubt to read that information. Any, you know, you look at just top line, look at two things. And, and we just kind of, you know, disparage people who do that. But if you want to mm -hmm. simplify this down to, to two simple things, how much are you making? Yeah. How much is it? How much is inflation? If you're making more than inflation, you're good. If you're making mm -hmm. less than inflation, you're not good. And it's a law of numbers on a big population in its entirety. It's as simple as that. If people aren't making as much as inflation is going up at, that is a negative consumer, um, a negative effect on the consumer at the end of the day. Yeah. And the other thing we've had in the last week or so, we've had some pretty negative retail reports, right? Costco CFO, I haven't said this on the daily news, but Costco's CFO said that he knows a recession is coming when people switch from beef to chicken. And he said, oh, by the way, people are switching from beef to chicken. I thought that was interesting, right? He has historical data on that. Um, we've had people, Dollar General, uh, Dollar Tree, both report horrible numbers. Um, we've had Target, Macy's, again, very interesting stuff. Even Nordstrom beat top line, but said consumers are shot. It's just, the consumer is paring back. I do, I'm still calling Q2 the start of the recession. It, it won't be reported for a while. Um, but yeah, I don't, I think, I think we're in it. And again, I think Powell is winning as much as winning can. And I don't see a red fate, Fed rate hike coming. We're going to stand pat. And another way to look at the 
U3, U6 data, so the unemployment data, if you will, mm -hmm. is, and this was described this way in a CNBC article, and I thought it was well put. It said, listen, what you have is a pickup in people that have said, I'm going from self-employed, is my title, exactly. to unemployed. And so what that also tells me is the fact that the gig economy yeah. might be starting to falter some. Right. So the great mm -hmm. resignation that happened a couple of years ago, people said, hey, I can step away and run a business on my own, be successful, this and that. You can do that when the economy is humming. When the economy is not humming, the need for your mediocre service, let's call it what it is, new in, in smaller businesses often are providing mediocre service. It's not there anymore. And therefore, you have to go from self-employed to unemployed. And that's what we're seeing. Yeah. And again, I think net net, that's what Powell was after. He wasn't yep, yep. after you losing your job. He's after taking the self-employed to unemployed to employed. So again, I think Powell looks at the numbers today and goes, I'm winning. We're going to pause next month or in a couple of weeks. Right. So, so let me draw that line a little bit further out. So you go from self-employed to unemployed to I need to get back into the workforce to that bringing down, that adding to the supply of workers, bringing down the wages on the other exactly. end, which overall brings down inflation. And, and that kind of is that whole feedback loop right there. Um, hopefully I did a good job there. I'm not sure if I did, but I think that, you, you know, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So Taylor, I know you put out a lot of great stuff on uh, Instagram and TikTok. Where can people find you? And by the way, I love it when you rant. Uh, so get, get your weekly rant in, please. I appreciate it. I certainly will at least once a week. You know that I get frustrated. Um, so now we are at Life Goal Investments, at Life Goal Investments on both TikTok and Instagram. Appreciate awesome, you, Michael. Man. You got it, bud.